Hello and welcome to Finextra. I'm Thea George and I'm here with Alessandro Baroni of Equin's Worldline. We're at EBA Day 2017 in Dublin and we're talking about PSD2. Alessandro, thank you for joining me. Likewise, thank you. So we hear about PSD2 and access to accounts as two of the most disruptive pieces of regulation for many years. Can you tell me in what ways you think they are disruptive and what challenges are they creating for banks? Indeed. So uh, we believe at Equans Worldline that PSD2 and access to account particularly is going to be one of the most disruptive uh, well, innovations at the end of the day, though it comes from uh, a, a, a regulatory intervention uh, after all. And it's going to be disruptive probably for three uh, elements uh, in particular. One is the fact that access to account in PSD2 will certainly address the revenue pools of, uh, of banks. Uh, and, and clearly, well, both on the retail side as well as on the corporate side, and clearly affect, uh, 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 as said, retail revenue pools, uh, interchange fees, with no immediate opportunity for replacing uh, these uh, uh, component of income due to the fact that uh, there is no fee that within the uh, PSD2 world a bank can charge to have a third party uh, 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 a TPP, a th third party player uh, accessing the account information. Secondly, uh, TPPs will clearly be in the position to break the customer ownership uh, equation that the bank is, is, is relying on and uh, put themselves in between and, uh, and actually push back the, the, the position that the banks, uh, the banks have. Thirdly, there is a point about information and, uh, well, very important from a competitive uh, uh, and customer intelligence perspective, aggregated information that TPPs will be in the position to use uh, to create competitive advantage and act towards uh, disintermediation for the banks themselves. Okay, so is PST2 going to take the financial industry to another level or is it more of a, a compliance challenge for individual <coughs> banks? Well, I believe that's the ambition. I think the whole point uh, is uh, whether the banks will embrace the concept of open banking, which is actually one of the natural consequences of, of PSD2 and access to account. The risk is that banks will only see uh, well, the compliant element of that and take their PSD2 as a regulation that uh, they need to adhere to. Uh, our recommendation when meeting uh, financial institutions is indeed to, to embrace uh, uh, the open banking concept because at the end of the day uh, 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 the risk on the business side for the banks is, is, is too high and actually uh, there are already symptoms or evidences of uh, you know, situations for example in the telco areas or, or in the uh, uh, financial management uh, 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 players that are offering similar services like the PSD2 and access to account will unleash and they are proving to, uh, to create value for, for this player as well as for the customer. Uh, also, um, if you look at uh, the reach that PSD2 and access to account will, uh, will, uh, will, will create, uh, if you think of a retailer for example, they will be able to create um, well, payment services at the end of the day, which uh, are entirely in their hands, so lever leveraging the, the reach that uh, 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 banks will have to give in the light of PSD2 uh, uh, across Europe uh, when it comes to European financial institutions. And build on that additional customer intimacy and digital experience uh, in a broader sense to their customer base. So can PSD2 access to accounts, can these generate opportunities for banks? Well, indeed. Uh, again, if, if uh, the notion of open banking is embraced to such a level within a bank where the governance uh, of the bank uh, recognizes that moving beyond uh, you know, the payments initiation service or uh, account information service purely from a regulatory perspective and try to you know, build a more holistic notion of digital services towards their customers, moving away from you know, uh, account services as a utility, but more as a, as, a, as, a, as a source of value, of customer value. We believe that this is uh, a, a great opportunity, but it requires a strong transformation of the business model of, uh, of the banks and a significant amount of, uh, of technology investments uh, with the result of having banks that uh, will differ very much from, you know, the typical, <coughs> uh, uh, say, uh, banking providers there are now, into a, well, close to fintech in some cases, possibly, uh, uh, kind of players. 
I understand. So as you look across Europe, do you see differences in thinking about how to handle and implement PSD2? Well, it has to be said that the regulation provides a kind of a framework uh, to implement PSD2, but it's not uh, too prescriptive as to how this is going to happen. So uh, we believe that the market will settle and probably intentionally the regulator has left to the market the challenge of finding the right way to uh, you know, manage the risks, uh, avoid fragmentation and uh, secure the most appropriate standard for, for a certain market. Um, and we're seeing uh, a, a variety of, of very different situations. Uh, in some cases, uh, we see uh, existing standards being elevated to the new standard under PSD2. In other cases, uh, think of Berlin Group or CAPS, uh, 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 new standards being uh, uh, introduced uh, uh, to be adopted specifically for, for the PSD2. This is not a settled uh, equation yet, and we are still in the, in the early stages for that. But again, we believe that... Uh, you know, the market itself uh, will efficiently settle the equation at some point. Alessandro, this has been great. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching.